So, good morning, everybody. My name is Diana Gerd Souza. I'm a stroke neurologist working in Lisbon and the chair of the ISO Young Stroke Physicians and Researchers Committee. And I'm here today with Walter van der Steen from Rotterdam, who is one of the coordinating investigators of the Mr. Clean Med trial, which was just presented at this conference. Walter, first, congratulations to you and uh, your team for completing this uh, very important study that addresses a common clinical question uh, in clinical practice for all stroke physicians and interventionalists uh, managing acute stroke patients treated with mechanical thrombectomy. So first, and to begin uh, with, could you please give me a short summary of the background of the Mr. Clean Met trial? Yes, of course. Uh, at first, thank you for the congratulations uh, and thank you for the invitation for having uh, me. Um, the Mr. Clean Met trial, uh, we evaluated uh, the use of acetylsalicylic acid and unfractionated heparin uh, during endovascular therapy for acute ischemic stroke. Uh, and the trial was started because uh, antithrombotic agents are often used uh, during endovascular therapy for acute ischemic stroke. Uh, however, no trial data was available uh, to assess the efficacy and also the safety of these agents. Uh, and therefore, there was also a large uh, practice variation. Um, so this was the reason we started the trial. Uh, and we, uh, the trial uh, was uh, designed uh, following a two times three factorial design. Uh, in which we evaluated uh, acetylsalicylic acid in a loading dose of uh, 300 milligrams uh, versus no acetylsalicylic acid, and also the use of unfractionated heparin versus no unfractionated heparin. Uh, and unfractionated heparin was evaluated in two separate dosages, uh, a low dose, uh, which included a loading dose of 5,000 units um, followed by uh, 500 units per hour for six hours. Uh, and also a moderate dose, uh, which included uh, also a loading dose of 5,000 units, but then followed uh, by 1,250 units uh, per hour for six hours. Thank you very much for this uh, complete overview. So last year, we heard about the interim results of the trial. Can you remind us of what happened in that uh, interim analysis? Uh, yes, that's correct. Uh, a colleague of mine uh, presented that, um, and what, uh, like I told, we evaluated two separate dosages of unfractionated heparin. Um, and in the trial, uh, for the safety of the trial, a uh, data and safety monitoring board uh, performed regular safety assessments uh, after every, fi every five symptomatic intracranial hemorrhage and or ten deaths uh, to assess the uh, symptomatic intracranial hemorrhage and mortality risks. Um, and in, uh, I think it was April 2019, um, after the fourth safety assessment, um, they advised to stop enrollment in the moderate dose of fractionated heparin arms uh, because of safety issues. Uh, and we found uh, that there was a significant increase in uh, symptomatic intracranial hemorrhage occurrence. And concomitantly, uh, there was also a significant increase in mortality rates um, when compared to no unfractionated heparin use. Um, so that's what we did. We followed the advice of the DSMB. We stopped enrollment in the moderate dose uh, unfractionated heparin arms. Um, and at that moment, uh, the DSMB advises that the remaining arms uh, were considered safe uh, at that moment. So uh, enrollment in these arms uh, was continued. So now we are very keen in knowing the new results uh, of the Mr. Clean Med trial uh, concerning these remaining arms uh, of the study. So. Can you tell me a bit about the final results and why was the trial stopped? Yes, of course. Yes, well, um, we plan to enroll 1,500 patients. Um, however, after enrolling 628 patients, um, the DSMB uh, performed another uh, analysis. It was the 11th uh, safety uh, assessment. Um, and afterwards, they advised the trial steering committee should be unblinded to the data. Uh, in order to make a decision about stopping or continuing the trial. Um, and we again followed the advice of the DSMB, so we were unblinded for the data. Um, and what we found is that also for the uh, remaining treatment arms, so both uh, acetylsalicylic acid as uh, low-dose and fractionated heparin, uh, there was also a significant increase in uh, symptomatic intracranial hemorrhage occurrence. Um, and in addition, we found that there was uh, no uh, beneficial effect uh, on the functional outcome of these patients. Um, and also, um, we did a sub-analysis um, to see what 
uh, how big of a chance it would be if we continue to trial uh, that we fi would find a positive effect on functional outcome. Uh, but this was considered negligible. Uh, so this was the reason that we uh, decided to stop the trial and so and stop enrollment in the remaining uh, treatment arms. Great. So you also evaluated very procedural use of uh, acetyl salicylic acid, like you like you just said. So we know there is uh, data suggesting that uh, this drug directly after treatment with alteplase may increase the rate of ICH. So can you uh, briefly explain us why did you decide to evaluate this drug also in this group of patients treated with alteplase? Yes, of course. Um, yeah, that's a very important question. Um, um, the reason we did this is because um, the data and the knowledge uh, we have um, is derived uh, mainly from the ARTIS trial. And the ARTIS trial is a trial uh, which was performed uh, before the endovascular therapy uh, was, was started. Um, and more recent uh, studies, uh, observational studies and also uh, post hoc analysis um, uh, on the uh, use of acetyl salicylic acid uh, in endovascular therapy actually showed a uh, low symptomatic intracranial hemorrhage risks uh, and also uh, they were, it was associated with a good functional outcome. So that's the reason that we uh, decided that it was important to also uh, evaluate the uh, effect of acetyl salicylic acid in patients with acute ischemic stroke, but then patients uh, undergoing endovascular therapy. Um, however, uh, yeah, well, the result, results show uh, somewhat the same, um, uh, but I think it's important that now we can also say that for these patients, uh, we should also avoid uh, the use of acetyl salicylic acid. Yeah, that's, that's very helpful. So when translating the results of this study to clinical practice, what would you recommend to physicians and interventionalists concerning the use of antithrombotic agents during endovascular thrombectomy? Uh, yes, well, that's of course the most important question. Um, I think um, what we can say from our study and from the results of our study, uh, we can say that uh, the use of the evaluated dosages of uh, acetyl salicylic acid and uh, unfractionated heparin should of course be avoided. Um, and uh, avoiding these uh, medications uh, and may uh, contribute to the uh, recovery of these patients. And so I think this is very uh, important information. Um, however, uh, I also have to mention that um, we cannot make a definite statement on the use of lower dosages uh, of the, ev of the evaluate, uh, evaluated agents um, because they may have a, a lower symptomatic intracranial hemorrhage risk but still um, have a potential effect. Um, and also, uh, we cannot make a definite statement on the use of antithrombotic agents uh, for other indications uh, because, because they are also used uh, after emergency carotid stenting uh, and also used in uh, use of heparin in pressure bags. Um, so we cannot make a definite statement about, about that. Great. So what do you think about the future? Do we need more trials addressing this question like you just mentioned? Yes, well, um, of course a trial would help uh, to, to, um, to assess uh, the questions I just mentioned. Um, however, I think yeah, it will be a complicated issue. Uh, of course, it will be the question uh, which uh, dosages you would evaluate, uh, because if you are going to evaluate uh, lower dosages, um, there will also be a lower potential efficacy. Um, and also, uh, yeah, well, with the results of the MISCI MET trial, um, which is stopped because of safety risk reasons. Uh, it's questionable whether someone would dare to start another trial uh, concerning the same issues. Um, so I think the most important thing is to, to see what the results of the MISC team uh, met will bring and it, it will bring up a debate, of course. Uh, and I think we have to go further from this debate. Good. So finally, and for those who would like to read uh, the full manuscript describing the results of this trial, can you tell us uh, now where and when is it going to be published? And of course, uh, unfortunately not yet. Um, we uh, uh, are in the process of submitting it to a major uh, journal, uh, but uh, yeah, we have to wait for their comments uh, before we can make any more statements about uh, the publishing. Okay. Uh, and we, well, 
Uh, we have a website, uh, www.mrclean-met.nl. It's an English website. Uh, and of course, when uh, we know more, we will uh, tell on this website. And also when you need some more background information, you can also go to this website. Fantastic. So thank you very much again for sharing the results uh, of this trial with us. And again, congratulations to you and your team. We look forward to hearing from you and the Mr. Clean uh, investigators on the next steps in this field. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure.